What if there was a supplement ingredient that enabled us to pee less? Welcome to Price Plow. Welcome to Price Plow. This is Mike, and I'm the founder of Price Plow. And this is a video where we're going to talk about well, this is one of our formulators corner videos. So we've got a few blog posts on the blog, and this is going to go along with one that we wrote where we uh, we talk about different things that we would like to see out of the dietary supplement industry, whether it's big or small. And this is probably on the smaller end of things, but it's a fun one. And so we're going to talk about using an ingredient that we're all very familiar with, but in a different type of application so that we don't have to pee as much. And I'm talking about using glycerol in a sleep aid. Now, over the course of years, we've seen there used to always be sleeping pills and melatonin and stuff, but the sleep aids, as we've seen more and more incredible formulas, have grown to bigger and bigger powdered formulas. And a lot of these powders force us to drink them with water. And when we see, when we have to drink them with water before bed, well, obviously that adds water to the system. And that may, sometimes makes us have to pee a little bit more. Now, when I take a product such as this, I try to use as little bit of water as possible. I try to shut off the water drinking at some point, go to the bathroom one last time and then get to bed, but that doesn't always work. And so sometimes we are interrupted in our sleep by having to go to the bathroom. Now, before I go any further, I'd also like to add that if this is a serious problem for you and you have an enlarged prostate, that's a completely different uh, scenario and you should see a doctor over that and you should not, um, you know, we're not trying to, to treat or cure or prevent any type of condition here, but we are trying to perfect the sleep aids that we have here. So every time, this kind of become an inside joke with Ben and I, and every time he says, oh, so-and-so is coming out with a new sleep aid, I'm like, oh, is it going to include glycerol so we can have less urination? And then invariably the answer is no but someone's gonna do it. And I'm gonna show you some of the data that, that discusses this. So we do a blog post talking about this, and we also have a very in-depth blog post talking about glycerol in general. So I'm not gonna get into the specifics of glycerol, but glycerol, also known as glycerin, and it's used for tons of different purposes, obviously, but glycerol as a supplement or as a, a molecule is incredibly important for a myriad of bodily functions. It is the backbone of our, of our fatty acids, like triglyceride has glycerol in there, um, but it's a sugar alcohol. And in the supplement world, the sports nutrition endurance uh, training supplement world, it is well known that if you take enough of it, you're going to increase hydration to the point of hyperhydration. And it works by, uh, by increasing cellular hydration and raising the osmotic pressure between cells. And it gives us to hang on to water. Well, if you start digging through all this data, there are three, uh, we have four studies we're gonna really talk about, but there's three main studies where not only did glycerol increase endurance, and that's generally going to be uh, when you drink it with plenty of water, as we're supposed to do in our pre-workout, pre-training type formulas, when you drink it with plenty of water, you hang on to that water longer. But what the studies also show very consistently is that there's reduced urine output. So this is great if you're running a marathon or a triathlon. Um, you know, obviously in the triathlon, you know, we could pee in our wetsuits and everything and kind of warms things up. But, <laughs> but in terms of a, on the bike or in the run, yeah, that's gonna actually you know, be annoyance and it's gonna slow you down, it's, it's not comfortable and you wanna keep your water inside you so that you can use it for the cellular hydration purposes. And so that is consistently what ends up happening in some of these studies. However, um, now what, I, what my idea though is is that instead of putting it in a pre-workout formula or on top of putting it into a pre-workout formula, perhaps we can add it or get someone to add it to a sleep aid and maybe like two, three grams or so can prevent us from having to go to the bathroom as much and maybe even add a little bit of heat protection. So let's really quickly take a look at some of these studies and, uh, and you can follow along on the blog post. We have the citations. I think a citation is four, five, and six in the blog post. And then uh, number seven is the uh, heat protection one. But in general, I think it all started in about 1990. And what happened was that they were, um, it's a small study, just six participants. So take it with a grain of salt. We don't have like, you know, thousands and thousands of people taking experimental drugs or anything like that. We have small pilot studies in the supplement industry, but uh, th this effect seems to be pretty consistent. And before I go any further though, the main uh, glycerol powder that we recommend that we like to use is NMB Nutrition's Hydro Prime, which has the least amount of clumping that we've tested and, um, and works incredibly well. This video is sponsored by NMB Nutrition and they are, uh, 
they were working with us on these formulators corner videos. We made a coffee creamer using their C8 Vantage and uh, that one might actually see the light of day. And I've kind of worked to perfect it. We made some mistakes in that video and it feels good. That's all I'm gonna say. I love this stuff. So, gotta use a dairy-based one, none of this pea protein creamer. Anyway, let's get back to cholesterol and hydration. 1996 different uh, participants in three different trials. And so they had one trial where they gave a large dose of cholesterol with water, and then one trial where they just gave the same amount of water, and then another trial with a low amount of water. They then waited two and a half hours, and then they, they tested, and then they began the exercise. Now, the reason I like this study is because we have data from before the exercise even began. At the two and a half hour mark, they hadn't yet exercised. And then they took measurements, and then they began exercising and did more measurements. So in this study, we actually have kind of what we want here is something that's not confounded by exercise, because most of these studies are endurance exercise based. And so in this study, at that two and a half hour mark before they exercised, they tested a few different things like uh, you know, markers of hydration, and urine volume was decreased in the glycerol trial to a statistically significant degree. And that was without any exercise having been done. So right off the bat, we know that if you take enough glycerol with the same amount of water, you're going to urine less than two and a half hours, at least if you're one of these six people. You can't really extrapolate it to everyone, but it seems to be kind of a general thing that's happening. So I like this one because it, it's more relevant to what we're doing. Now, in these other ones, a 1995 study, the researchers were talking about like athletes now and everything. Uh, they wanted to see a little bit longer of the hyperhydration situation. And so they began two, two experiments and they tested users at either 32 or 49 hours after consuming large amounts of water and glycerol. And they found that in both cases, the subjects had lower, significantly lower urine volumes and over time up to 700 milliliters less uh, urine output in the glycerol group. So over the course of time, this stuff gets you to hang on to your water. And that's great for training, it's great for heat protection. I'm also claiming that it might be great for a sleep aid. Finally, 2004, we have another study, similar results. Um, and so in this one, it's a double blind procedure. Researchers uh, had 12 male mountain bikers in three different groups on a 30 mile race. One group received no water during the race. Womp womp, sorry for those guys in that randomized trial. Anyways, one group received no water, which sucks. I love, I love science. Uh, another was given only water before and uh, during the, uh, the race. And then the third group was given glycerol and water before the race, and then just regular water without the glycerol during the race. So kind of like we would do, that third group is kind of like what we would have is training with the glycerol beforehand, um, or you know, taking the glycerol pre-workout, and then you know, just training with your water and everything. So in that, in that case, the glycerol group actually had tons of different multiples, uh, yeah, tons of markers of improved hydration, including decreased thirst, more consistent performance and heart rate, and less heat-induced strain. But to a non, but it was it was better, but not statistically significantly better. They also urinated less during the race, and so we're kind of seeing this trend here. This one, um, yeah, it wasn't significant. I bet you we would reach a significance if we had more athletes, or if we, uh, you know, we're seeing that trend. So that's the whole point. I'm very excited about like fun little things like this. And so the question is, why don't we apply this to sleep aids? We uh, we have the ability to maybe keep in a little bit more water, maybe have to urine less, and then that's gonna give us less breaks in sleep. However, there's even another, another point that I wanna go, and this one might be a little bit more shaky because I don't have like data to connect it, but um, generally, we've seen that glycerol can also protect you against uh, heat-induced stress when training in extreme heat. So there was a trial and they were in the greater, like it was 95 degree Fahrenheit type weather, uh, really high level, like near Olympian style athletes, and they had far greater endurance and less urine when they were training in the heat in this last study. Uh, but what was really interesting is that their core body temperature was two degrees less in the glycerol group. So keeping the water and not having to urinate, you know, not having to urinate it out allowed them to possibly keep themselves cooled a little bit. I'm not sure how the sweat metrics worked, if it made them sweat a little bit more because they kept it inside or if they didn't sweat as much, um, we might have to look into that part. But in general, their body, core body temperatures are two degrees less. I mean, that's huge when you're training in, in heat. So like if you're training in like 95 degree heat, 
absolutely, I think you should be taking plenty of water, obviously, electrolytes, but also glycerol. You might even want to go with like a higher dose of glycerol, like a liquid or something like that. And so there are some products like that. Um, but in general, our pre-workouts that have, I have the glycerol powder in it, you're going to get a little bit of dose and that's going to help with the heat protection. Now here's the tenuous part of things. We sleep better with better with lower body temperatures as well. And so there are re there's much research showing that sleeping in the cold gives us better sleep, better sleep patterns, less interruptions. And uh, you, you might even see if like listen to certain podcasts, like maybe like the Tim Ferriss podcast and some of the biohackers out there, they're always talking about these cooling sleeping pads and stuff. And so there is a lot of research showing that sleeping in the cool is better. I'm not, I don't have a sleeping pad that's cold. I'll, I'll put it that way. However, now if we've seen that glycerol can possibly keep our core body temperature a little bit lower and we can sleep better with a little bit lower of a, of a temperature, then maybe, just maybe, glycerol can also improve the sleep a little bit as well if we're able to take some before bed, hang on to the water, and keep our bodies cool. Although all the stuff that we've seen that where glycerol helps keep our bodies cool was done when training in heat with water. So, Keep that, you know, it's, it, keep it in mind. Anyway, that's pretty much all I want to say is that someday out there, Ben's going to be like, hey, Mike, there's a new sleep aid out there. And I'm like, does it have cholesterol in it so that we don't pee as much during the, during the middle of the night? And he's going to say yes. And I probably wasn't the first to think of it. I'm almost guaranteeing I wasn't the first to think of it. Maybe it was Gorilla Chemist. I don't know. Some, I don't know. People have talked about it before. But it's a blog post that we wrote, got a lot of engagement. I wanted to make a video out there for all you all in the YouTube world and everything because I think it's a fun idea and someone will do it eventually. Maybe Bennett Morphogen, I don't know. Somogen's pretty nice. Like you know, this formula actually has mitoburn in it from NMB Nutrition too. Um, and the lavender, saffron, three grams of glycine, which is the clinical dose. Good stuff. We're not here to talk about somogen, but maybe we can get some added uh, glycerol in there. And if you uh, want to just try this on your own, there are Alpha Lion Gains Candy Hydro Prime uh, capsules. Like take six of them and see how it works. Let us know in the comments if you have that and if you want to give that a shot. We have links to all these in the blog post. And uh, that's about it. So I'm just having a fun time on a Friday in a little formulator's corner. Someone make us a sleep aid with some glycerol in it so that we don't have to pee as much in the middle of the night. All right, so thanks for watching, subscribe to the channel, and have a good one. Welcome to Price File.